Again, BYU looking to become bowl eligible for a sixth straight season. They need a win. Oklahoma State with a win to the Big 12 championship. If Oklahoma State were to lose, it'll be Oklahoma playing for the Big 12 title. Anish Raf, Andre Ware, Paul Carcaterra will be with us in just a moment. It's amazing to think Oklahoma State in September was blown out on this field by South <laughs> Alabama. Yeah. Then they recalibrated. Now today they're playing for a spot in the Big 12 championship. Yeah, and all you want is a player, is a chance. You, you, you want to know what's out there. What can I go do? And for Oklahoma State, it's right ahead of a win, and you're in the conference championship game. For BYU, it's your, you win, and you're going to a bowl game, 15 extra practices for your program. So it's simple for the players. Just go out and, and get it done. And what changed for Oklahoma State? Well, they started leaning on their running back, and Ollie Gordon has been as good as we've seen in college football. Yeah, he's been magical, leading the nation in rushing over 1,400 yards. He can run it, bounce it, and get it outside. He can run between the tackles. He's spectacular, a guy that uh, has basically taken over as the focal point of this Oklahoma State offense. He only had 19 carries yeah. in the first three games. He's done the majority of his work in league play. For BYU, this is a team that's had growing pains in its first season in the Big 12 for the last few weeks with a quarterback change due to injury things have opened up offensively yeah enter Jake Retzloff who is a magical player in his own right led the nation in terms of the junior college level uh, in passing over 4,500 yards 44 touchdown passes to go along with it inserting him into the lineup has really changed things for BYU's offense in their passing game it has really opened up the run as well the worst rushing team in the Big 12 has found some juice in these last two games. We're back with the opening kick. From Boone Pickett Stadium in Stillwater, you're watching the Big 12 on ESPN. In pre-game, Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy was wired. Good job, guys. Good to see you guys again. Yes, Good to sir. see you. What's up, Coach? Come here, come here, give me a hug, bro. How you doing, man? Oh, sure everyone's going to be wearing suit coat and all that stuff. I said, yeah. Then I saw you. I'm like, these guys, I should yeah. ask you. For you know, Mike Leach used to always say, we're coaches, we're not bankers. <laughs> I hate wearing a tie. <laughs> me too. I can, I'm sure you do. You know, if oh, I can ever help you, let me know, okay? You've always been so all right, good man, proud of you, man. That. I am. Thank I'm proud so of you, all right? Thank good you. man. You're a good man. Andre, next year, we got to make the sweatshirt blazer thing. I like it. A thing. Let's do it. Mike Gundy has had a stellar career at Oklahoma State. He's done nothing but win. And Paul Carcaterra, even when there were some doubters back in September, boy, has he silenced them. Well, Anish, he is a flat-out winner. He's been at Oklahoma State for 19 years, 18 straight winning seasons. But on this field in September, when they were hammered against South Alabama, not many people expected this team to be one win away from a Big 12 championship game. But after that game, he told us they amped things up. They started practicing longer, ones repping against ones, and they haven't stopped since. Every single player ball and when things got tough, nobody pointed a finger. He went on to say he loves this group and he's having as much fun with this team as he's had with any in almost two decades. And Andre, they also simplified. Yeah, they did. I mean, you're talking about a, a, a group that we, at any given time or any given year, they've thrown it in one year, they've run it in one year. He's smart enough to adapt uh, his program and figure out what the offense or the defense needs from year to year for them to be successful and keep them in a position to run for a conference championship. Kalani Sataki, another head coach at his alma mater. He's led BYU to a bowl game the last five years. Another winner. The guy that just wins and gets him to bowl games. And I think fan bases need to be careful, especially two programs like this. And, you know, you start talking and asking for much, much more. Allow these guys to continue coaching and going about their winning ways because sometimes there have been a lot of programs that have let coaches go and they've never recovered. BYU knows the value of continuity. Lavelle Edwards all those years. Bronco Mendenhall. Oklahoma State won the toss, selecting to receive. And this is Brennan Presley who brings it out across the 25 
to the 28. So well, we get to see this Cowboys offense first, and Oklahoma State is led by Alan Bowman, their quarterback. It's been an odyssey for him. He began his career in the Big 12 at Texas Tech, was putting up Andre Ware numbers as a freshman, then had injuries, went to Michigan, where he sat on the bench for the last few years, back in the Big 12, and again, one win away from taking this team to the Big 12 championship. What if Mike Gundy and Casey Dunn tell us that he was kind of perfect for what they wanted in a quarterback in this program. And at his time in Texas Tech and Michigan, it's kind of a blend of both offenses which he's played in. Uh, first down, he hands it off to Ollie Gordon, who's got a huge hole, got a great block by his receiver, Owens, and brings it into BYU territory for a pickup of 23. Uh, excellent blocks up front along the offensive line, that right side, and Springfield and Wilson opening up holes for the nation's number one leader. Screen pass to the outside. That is Presley, and he zigzags his way inside the 30 of BYU. 20 more for Presley, who last week had 15 catches, Ridiculous. one shy of the Oklahoma State school record. Yeah, tossing 189 yards to go along with that, but what do you do in a game? You're trying to get to a Big 12 championship game? Rely on your playmakers, Gordon and Presley. Bowman will check down to Gordon, hurdles one defender, and then ducks under to get to the 27 for a short pickup. And that's what you do. You rely on guys that you know can make plays. Oklahoma State, they open up the game with a big run with Ollie Gordon a second, and then a big pass play to Brennan Presley. Run and pass, keeping BYU off balance. It's Gordon again, and he hammerheads to the 21, about a yard and a half shy of the line to gain. Ollie Gordon again, the nation's leading rusher. His first three games really was part of a timeshare at running back. So in his eight conference games, he's done the majority of his work, 92% of his yards in yeah, Big 12 it's, play. It's Barry Sanders-like in the last kind of seven, eight games for Ollie Gordon. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's been impressive what he's done on the ground. Presley motions. The pistol set is something Oklahoma State has gone to more with Gordon. Here's Presley, and he's a race to the backfield by Jacob Robinson. He's one of the top corners in the entire Big 12. It's fourth down. Nice tackle there. And you see Oklahoma State go ahead and take the points here early with Alex Hale. They, they feel pretty good about it. It went for a loss there on that play. I think Mike Gundy may have rolled the dice a little bit, gambled and gone for it, but you lose yardage on third down. You're going to go ahead and take the points here. This will be a 40-yarder for the Australian Hale. And his kick is good. Oklahoma State scores on its opening possession. Six plays, 49 yards in about two and a half minutes, and it's Hale from 40 yards. Weekend rolls on tonight on ESPN, number five, Florida State. No Jordan Travis in the swamp to take on Florida. Knowles have already booked a trip to the ACC championship. Georgia already in the SEC championship finishes against Georgia Tech. How the committee views undefeated Florida State, if there are worthy one-loss teams with no Jordan Travis, will be something to watch over these next two weeks. Kick results in a touchback, and we get an update from Ann Arbor with Kevin Nagandi. I think it's time now for all state good hands play of the day book. Final 30 seconds left. Ohio State's Kyle McCord. They're driving, but what happens? Yeah, care pressure burst pipes. Nice little rush by Hale. He's trying to force it to Marvin Harrison Jr. And a great play by Michigan. The big house is rocking with the win. Rod Moore with the pick, and Michigan's going to the Big Ten title game. They'll face Iowa. Back to you. Andres, Ohio State finished in terms of the playoff. I think they're done in terms of the playoff. I felt like the winner or the loser of that game was done. It would be a New Year's Six Day team, but uh, certainly out of the playoff conversation. First to drive for BYU. Retzlaff, quick throw to the outside. It's Keelan Marion, just shy of the 30-yard line. The quarterback, Jake Retzlaff, number one junior college QB, coming to BYU. He can still redshirt this season. This is his fourth start. It's his fourth game played. 
and he can play in the bowl game, which this year does not count toward your redshirt status. And he's going to play against the stingy defense, especially early in the game. They're the only team, I think, in the country that hasn't allowed a TD on the opening drive all season. That one gets away on the pitch. It's a loose ball, and Oklahoma State covers it up. As dynamic as Retzlaff can be at times, he has been turnover prone, and Trey Rucker gets the fumble recovery. Yeah, I'm not sure that one's on Jake Retzlaff. I think it may have been on Aiden Robinson, just not handling Pulling the pitch. The field, it's the right there. Pass. He got the cover. Throttles his body down, down, not expecting Oklahoma the pitch, State. and then all of a sudden it's on him, and then bouncing off his shoulder pads and onto the turf. But that one's not on Retzlaff. It's right there. We can see Aiden Robbins take his eyes off the pitch just long enough for it to hit his shoulder pads and end up on the turf. But what a start this would be for Mike Gundy in Oklahoma State. And the turnovers for Oakland, excuse me, for BYU the last four games, minus eight. Quick throw. It's Leon Johnson. First team All-American at Division Three. George Fox, where he had a bunch of receiving yards. Looks like he had a, a, his best game against Cincinnati this year. His first FBS game, he had 149 yards. Ollie Gordon, wow. The patience, the vision, that's first and goal. Always seems to have one here, right? You know, going all the way back to the days of Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders. I mean, they've got a just a boatload of running backs, and especially under head coach Mike Gundy. Been able to produce some pretty good running backs over the last few years. Pistol set, Gordon behind Bowman. Gordon again. There's nowhere to go. BYU showing their uh, ability to be stingy and stout up front. Hard to move. Mahe is a big guy up front in right in the middle of that uh, BYU defensive line that they really, really like down here. Multiple tight end set. Gordon gets the call. And turned back by this BYU defense, only a yard. Third and goal is this four down territory? I think so, because you have the lead, and Mike Gundy may roll the dice if it gets to fourth down. Now, this would be a huge win, and we call them small wins for BYU, if they're able to just hold for a field goal. Big turnover, their own end of the field this deep couple of uh, first down or so and they're knocking at the door but to hold a field goal attempt here would be huge for BYU they feed Gordon again and turn back again the BYU defense it's Max Tooley and the safety crew Wakely making the stop now it's fourth down and Oklahoma State will settle for three. Yeah, Tooley showing his versatility and his ability to uh, play sideline to sideline. That's kind of how he is. Explosive player who is really, really good off the edge of their defense and can play the run between the tackles. I can't tell you how big this is for BYU to just hold into this field goal attempt. Hale hit from 40 on the opening drive. The chip shot from 20 is good. It is six nothing. So the BYU turnover leads to three for Oklahoma State. Six nothing Cowboys with the trip to the Big 12 championship on the line. ABC College Football is presented by Tom's. Tackle game day heartburn fast and love food back. Use as directed. And in part by Chick-fil-A. Cater the holidays with a Chick-fil-A Nuggets tray. Order it on the Chick-fil-A app today. 
pictures from our dedicated crew celebrating the holiday weekend. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. Happy Black Friday shopping. Anish Raf, Andre Ware, Paul Carcaterra. Normally, Andre, you, myself, and Carc, we're working Friday. We're traveling. Yep. Thursday, we got to have a Thursday with the family. We did, and uh, what a great Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all our viewers out there. Hope everyone had a safe and fantastic Thanksgiving. All season long, student sections across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell with my student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Well, the big development early in this game, Oklahoma State drove down the field, got into BYU territory, stopped, settled for a field goal. BYU turned it over deep in its own zone. Oklahoma State had a goal-to-go situation, stopped, had to settle for a field goal. A couple of trips inside the red zone early for Oklahoma State, and BYU's defense has had to answer. They have, and here we go. Aiden Robbins is coming off a career game. Picks up seven on first down. 22 carries, a buck 82. Last time out against Oklahoma. That's been the big difference, Andre, the last two weeks. A run game, which is still statistically last in the Big 12, yeah. has found some traction. Yeah, they really have, and they, they decided to go to Aiden Robbins and really feed him and become the workhorse, really slim things down in the playbook in terms of how many run plays they have, and that's produced the success the last couple of weeks. Rex Laff threw it behind his reliable tight end, Isaac Rex. It's third down. Yeah, and that's a guy you want to make sure you're getting the ball to, is Rex. He's productive, especially when they get down inside the red zone. It's 6'6", six, six, uh, 255 pounds. As the the, uh, the school record for most receptions by a tight end or touchdowns receptions with 24. This BYU receiving core, it's about as healthy as it's been all season. And again, Retzlaff had some issues on the possible exchange. He's got to cover it up, and it's fourth down, and BYU will have to punt. Yeah, just can't have the mistakes. A couple of ball handling uh, exchanges with this BYU offense with Retzlaff and Robbins. they got to clean that up if they're going to give themselves a chance to go to a bowl here in 2023. That's what's on the line for them. And a couple of times here early in the first two possessions, put the ball on the ground. The punt by Ryan Rico will be fair caught by Presley inside the 25. So BYU goes three and out. Oklahoma State with the ball for their third possession when we come back. season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities. All state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, All State. Third drive for Oklahoma State. Ollie Gordon in the backfield. Out of the pistol look. Josiah Johnson, the tight end in motion, and Bowman will throw. Sends it downfield, had a receiver open, and he overshot Rashad Owens, second and ten. Yeah, he's one of their deep threats, and I think Ed Bowman held on to the ball a little bit longer. He had more time than he thought to allow Owens to clear the corner to that side, and then go ahead and put the ball up as he's clearing. He put it up as he was still in his route, and you don't really have a feel at that point for how much separation you have to work with. Owens has emerged here in Big 12 play. Presley the motion man this time. Bowman to the air. They set up the screen. Jaden Nixon, he's got speed. And he gets pummeled just shy of the 30-yard line. A.J. Vong Pichon, the senior from Pasco, Washington, by way of Utah State with the tackle. Man, with Nixon, you talk about speed. Yeah, he's got it. 4-4 speed in the 40. Excellent receiver out of the backfield. So when they, he comes into the game, that should be a tell for BYU that Oklahoma State's looking to get him the ball on a swing pass, some kind of some kind of pass route. Plus receiver on the scouting report, but that was just his first catch since September 23rd. Low snap. Bowman flushed. Buys time. Into coverage. And almost intercepted by Camden Garrett. 
Hunt. Steady player at corner, and I'm not sure how he misses this, this ball. I mean, it's there for the taking. Comes out, it's kind of a wounded duck. And Garrett just can't really. Now, was that a hold? A little bit, but he and Leon Johnson got tangled. Leon's doing his job because Garrett had a better, better line of sight to the ball, and he just playing defensive back at that point. Hudson Cock kicks it away. And Parker Kingston signals for the fair catch. 44-yard kick, no return. BYU gets the ball back, and so far BYU's been able to stem the tide. Oklahoma State has been big. controlling the game, but only six nothing on the score. Yeah, big plays by Ollie Gordon and Presley and uh, Brennan Presley. Net got him down inside the red zone. The initial drive held to a field goal, a turnover. A, a BYU holds to another field goal. Really kept them in this game here early with uh, with a couple of got a couple of times where the ball has been on the turf and uh, able to, uh, to to kind of save the day with two field goals. You saw the graphic with the rushing disparity from the last two games to the season. Yeah. 36% of BYU's rushing yards have come in the last two games. Big reason why Aiden Robbins, who was a 1,000-yard running back last year at UNLV, started at Louisville. He had been hurt most of the season with a rib injury. He's now finally healthy. Yeah, they want to get him carries. 20-plus to be exact last week in their game against Oklahoma. A near win in that game. He ran the brand for 182 yards on 22 carries when he's better and he's as the game gets going. And later in the game, that's when you see Aiden Robbins really, really start to contribute. Out of the two tight end set, Robbins again tries the left side, and nothing there. He'll lose a yard on the play. It's third down. And it hadn't been a, a magical year by any means of third downs for Oklahoma State defensively. 40% on third downs this year for Oklahoma State's defense. And, and BYU in the last two possessions, they've been in third and short and unable to, or to convert. Here's Robbins. He's got a first down and gets out across the 45 before Nicholas Martin, the Big 12's leading tackler, brought him down. Boy, he's 6'3", 240, but runs like he's a much smaller back. The agility, the quick feet. Well, he is going to be attractive to a lot of NFL rosters once he decides to, uh, to make himself available for the draft. Built like Hercules, feet like Hermes. Rex left to the air. Steps up. Checks down. He's got Rex. And the tight end into Cowboy territory. Setting up a second down and short. I thought better of it. Hey, let's go ahead and pad these stats, these uh, passing numbers a little bit with Jake Retzlaff and decide to go to his big tight end, Isaac Ricks. Who they usually, as I mentioned earlier, they target him down in the red zone. But here in the open field, such a big target, he had to take it. He's BYU's second leading receiver. Might be a chance for a shot here, second and short instead of Roberts. First down, huge hole. And he powers all the way to the 20-yard line, a gain of 24. And Aiden Robbins picking up where he left off a week ago. A nice block to kind of collapse things by Connor Pay in the middle of that formation. And then all of a sudden, Robbins is off to the races. We've got a pretty good matchup with two really, really sound running backs today. The nation's leader and another talented young player on the other side. Five carries, 52 yards for Robbins. Split back look with L.J. Martin in there. Robbins now motions out. Martin gets the carry, breaks the tackle, and chugs his way close to the 10. L.J. Martin, true freshman from El Paso. Andre, both his parents, FBI agents, and 
you could say he ended up at BYU thanks to an FBI tip. Well, he was actually committed to Stanford after decommitting. One of his parents' co-workers said, hey, what about BYU? Okay, we'll look at it. BYU is on the phone a few hours later. Pretty good recruiting and pretty good pipeline to BYU from Texas. Red slap, the keeper, and he gets inside the 10. That is enough to move the sticks. First well, and goal. Felon Oliver, who is a sideline to sideline player, two time All Big 12 player, and just one of the heartbeats, along with Nicholas Martin, of this Oklahoma State defense. You've got three really good linebackers, and that's where yeah, I would say the strength of this defense lies. Xavier Benson, throw his name in there with along with Martin and Oliver. And you've got three of the, the absolute best in this conference. Little jet motion. This is Kingston navigating the sideline. And they're going to mark him out of bounds right at the two. I thought he was going to get in cleanly, I mean, or with ease. And then all of a sudden, the speed of Oklahoma State's defense kind of shows true. Nice job by Corey Black to that side of holding his, his, uh, his position and leverage and not allowing the receiver to turn up and get in the end zone. Starting right tackle for BYU today, Caleb Etienne, former Oklahoma State Cowboy, started at left tackle for Oak State last year. BYU without its starting left tackle today. Retzlaff, quarterback draw, powers into the end zone. Touchdown, BYU. And that's why they like him so much. His ability to just kind of go off script and make plays with his legs. All of it kind of rolled in the one and reminds them of Jaron Hall along with Zach Wilson when they, they had success at the quarterback position. And this is that's exactly what, uh, what Jake Retzlaff gives BYU. He plays with a lot of energy, too. I like that. He does, and he has changed this offense. Again, the key for him, limiting mistakes and turnovers. Extra point by Will Farron is good. And BYU marches 73 yards in nine plays to how, take the lead. How big were those, the defense holding Oklahoma State to two field goals, one score, and now BYU back in front with quarterback draw with Jake Raslov. And they are back in, or they're in front for the first time this afternoon. Retzlaff taking over at quarterback for Keaton Slovis, who you might remember from USC and last year at Pittsburgh. This is a place, Boone Pickens Stadium, they've had great crowds all season long. You get the final game of the regular season, a little bit of weather, a lot of the students are away. Yeah, chance. It's a game where at least early on, you kind of have to bring some of your own juice. You do, and as a player, you're not worried about the crowd, you know, providing the juice, that's extra. You have to be ready to play, and you know what's Outside kick here, and BYU covers it up. I think it was actually cut, uh, touched by a BYU player. No flag yet. And then, excuse me, an Oklahoma State player, and then BYU just pounces right on the ball. Two things to watch. Does the ball travel 10 yards? And the kicking team cannot block the opposing team before it travels 10 yards. And I'm with you. Looks like 40 for Oklahoma State. Might have touched the ball. I think he touched it uh, almost it's... right at the 45, maybe before it went 10 yards. The previous play of the recovery by Lee Kuhn. They may have touched two Burrow. players for Oklahoma State. Talmadge Gunther, I think, is the, the player that recovers for BYU. Now, when they review this, they're going to look at everything. They're going to look at who touched it. They're also going to look at if number 40 was blocked mm -hmm. before that ball traveled 10 yards because if he was blocked by a BYU player, you can tell we'll get another look here. 45 is that 10-yard line and again, was he contacted for that ball travel 10 yards? Be Garrick Martin one of the backup safeties for 
Oklahoma State. A reserve safety. You see number 21. He makes contact. The question is, had the ball already traveled 10 yards? From that angle, it's tough to tell. So they've got a lot to work through here up in the replay booth. He is clearly going for the ball. And remember, the ruling on the field was BYU football. It's tough to tell if it touched. And again, if the Hard Oklahoma there. State player touches it first, then it's a free-for-all. Free then for it all. doesn't matter if the player was blocked or even if the ball traveled 10 yards, if the Oklahoma State player touched it before 10 yards. Yeah. So the officials have layers to work through here. And the big thing, what they find, was it conclusive enough to overturn the call? Otherwise, it's BYU football. The big thing is trying an onside kick this early in the game. What does that that's tell a you? Big, that, what does that, that tell BYU you? came to win, man. That's what, that's what it tells me. But did Martin touch it? It's tough to tell with that look. Card, Kalani Sataki, now he's got some riverboat in him. I know we were talking before the game. Sometimes he's tried fake punts when he's been inside his 20-yard line. 2016 Friday night on the road at Boise State. Johnny Lenahan, the Australian punter. Fourth and 16 from their own nine in the, the last couple minutes of the second quarter. Kalani rolled the dice. It didn't work for Johnny that day, but he certainly has the guts to do these things. Be huge for BYU. You talk about After a huge review, swing. There was an illegal early block by number 21 of the kicking team. The ball had not traveled 10 yards prior to the contact. That's a five yard penalty. Will re kick at the 30 yard line. So that was definitive enough for the officials to overturn the call, and we'll have a re kick. And again, you're watching where the ball is when that block happens. Just a short sky kick, and it's fair caught inside the 30-yard line. I'm RG3 Zit. See you next time. All right, who yeah. changed my name to RG3 Zit? Me. It's a great combo, like college football and cheese it. You like? You cheddar believe it. And how will college football fans feel? They're going to be feeling the cheese. Yes! you to cheese it for that quick word so Kalani Sataki had tried it didn't work Oklahoma State now has the football at its own 29 Ali Gordon the running back with Bowman in the shotgun Presley in space cuts a jagged path out to the 35 yard line in the six yards on the play well he's quick isn't he <laughs> he has got some quickness and the ability to change gear, change directions in a heartbeat back out of the pistol gordon one cut and he's a yard shy of the marker one of the changes to this offense early was more use of the pistol which better suits Ollie Gordon's running style. Yeah, he can get downhill in a hurry out of the pistol rather than always having to run lateral uh, when you're in the shotgun. Again, getting downhill, feet turning, and a first down for Oklahoma State. Kind of creative the way they named the pistol you know, in regards to the shotgun. He thought that was pretty cool. You brought up a great point when we were here in early October 
when Oklahoma State was trying to figure out who they were and they had a big Friday night win against Kansas State. You use their first month of the season with the analogy of that was their preseason trying to find their identity as Bowman is flushed on the corner blitz, throws downfield, nearly intercepted, and he wanted Presley. And almost caught by Presley after the they near interception. Incomplete final. Yeah. Cooling Took him a long time. It's an incomplete pass. Could be second down. That is the end of the first quarter. One quarter in the books. BYU seeking bowl eligibility. Oklahoma State seeking a trip to the conference championship. You're going against the nation's leading rusher and Ali Gordon. What's critical in terms of defending him? Yeah, be assignment sound and be gap sound. I think we're doing a pretty good job at it, but uh, they're going to keep giving him the ball, and he's a really good back. So, uh, we, you know, as long as we make tackles, I think we'll be okay. You're back. Aiden Robbins is getting going. What's allowing him to feel it? Yeah, we're getting on our blocks, and uh, I think we get some rhythm and, and get some momentum. So we got to keep this thing rolling. That's why we did the onside, trying to get the ball back to him. I like it, Coach. Appreciate it. <laughs> Well, he's talking about Ali Gordon touching the ball. That's the 18th play run for Oklahoma State. He's touched it nine times. 50% of the time, Ali Gordon is touching the ball for Oklahoma State. Try a quarterback sneak here on third and short for midfield. And he's going to get a special spot looks short. Pretty good spot here. I didn't think he was that close. He got turned sideways. And this is going to be just shy. We take the, we're going to measure this one. I thought initially he got hit and turned sideways, which would have been just shy of the first down mark. Get some push and it just didn't go anywhere. It's closer to where his feet were than the actual spot. Favorable spot for Oklahoma State. If you're short, do you go for it? I think so. 50 yard line. You're right there. Now Got you're the number one rusher in the nation. Trailing in this game now at home. I think so. Go for it here. Best back in the country for, you know, in terms of yardage. One key piece on that Oklahoma State offensive line missing again. That's Jason Brooks Jr. Just don't do it out of the shotgun. Brooks missing his fourth straight game, so Cole Birmingham getting to start again at left guard. They back up into the gun. Gordon and Nixon flank Bowman. BYU will call a timeout, so Alan Bowman and that's how so offense will retreat back to the sideline. That's how important this down is for BYU. They get a stop here. It's great field position. Kick off your week 12 NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern. It's the countdown crew getting you set on ESPN. Chiefs take on the Raiders in Vegas. An all-access look at the Mahomes. Max Crosby on field rivalry and why victory Monday are the two words every player loves to hear. Fourth down, Ali Gordon, the running back of the pistol. Oklahoma State needs less than a yard. Bowman will throw. Back pedals, and he's got to kill it with the pressure coming. That was Jackson Cravens blowing up the play, and BYU takes over at midfield. Yeah, you just can't have the play bust that Oklahoma State had. Ollie Gordon either went the wrong way or Alan Bowman opened the wrong way. It's supposed to be play action. You see the mix up and they're trying to set up a screen. I want to say it's actually Ollie Gordon. They're trying to screen to the left. He went right and uh, it just threw the entire play off. And now for BYU. To take, take a, a shot, shot, baby. The midfield, you just had a sudden change. Either through a big defensive stop, however, turnover, defensive stop. Let's go up top here. 
Steps the motion man. It's Robbins, and he's tracked down right at the line of scrimmage by Nathan Latu. You know, Robbins had a great first quarter. He told me earlier that the ball is really slick today. It's around 40 degrees. It's been raining. We've had a little bit of hail. Ball security could be an issue. Three and White's had some fumbles earlier in the season. Not today, but he also said he's loving these new water gloves he's wearing right now. He said they're super water resistant and have great grip. Water gloves. That's what he told me. Retzlaff has an open receiver and too hot for Chase Roberts. Third down. So, Andre, I've been introduced to some new technology today. There was water gloves. in the elevator wearing a heated jacket. I got to have one of those, man. And now, water gloves. Yeah. yeah I mean, the, the, you know how I am in the cold. Oh, you don't get me started. <laughs> it's like 90 degrees in that booth. You are the softest human when it's cold. And when it's cold and wet, you run for the hills. Absolutely. You know I do. And I admit it. Openly admit it. So this jacket this lady had, I got to find out, you know, where did, where she got it? I'm to invest in one. It's getting that time of year. On third down, a little RPO. And that is going to be ruled a backwards pass. Fourth down. Now you're going to have to punt it because of it. And there, the RPO, I would have given it to the run portion of the RPO because Robbins came through. Completely free and clear would have been at least uh, about a six to seven yard gain and having Kalani Sataki with a decision to make on fourth down instead We're gonna have to punt it away here. Rico's got a great leg 29 punts of 50 yards this season for Number two behind James Ferguson Reynolds in the FBS in punting average he does his job here, pinning Oklahoma State inside its own 10-yard line. A lot to play for for both of these teams, and it's BYU with a one-point lead. Our hardest-working player brought to you by Duluth Trading Company is Oklahoma State long snapper Zeke Zaragoza. At the age of three, Zeke was diagnosed with Opsoclonus Myoclonus Syndrome, which is a disease that affects the central nervous system. And at the time, only 1 in 10 million people were affected annually. During his early years, he was confined to a wheelchair and a walker and was told he would never play sports or even ride a bike. But his family went all in on an aggressive form of treatment that entailed steroid shots, chemotherapy, along with other meds and physical therapy. And by the age of seven, he was in remission. And by 10, his dream of playing football became a reality. He told me his mom, Channon, was instrumental in making others aware of his journey, telling them his story should not be wasted. We and Carl, I don't mean to interrupt. We just got a pick six from Eddie Heckard. And these Oklahoma State fans in a bit of stunned disbelief. But I mean, just opened right up. Eddie Heckard with his fourth interception of the year for BYU. Just a miscommunication between Jaden Bray and Alan Bowman, the quarterback. He's thinking a hitch. Bray's thinking a nine round, a hitch converted to a streak. And the only man standing there was Eddie Hecker. That's the last two plays for Oklahoma State. Offensive miscommunication. Fourth down, looks like a play action. Ollie Gordon's not there. Setting up a screen play to Ollie Gordon, they go the wrong way. And then here, you're thinking a hitch route, that big cushion, absolutely you run the hitch. Unless it's hitch and go that you've called in the huddle. You don't automatically convert to that. And so Jaden Bray decided that he was going to convert it. And the way with Bowman threw that ball with conviction, he's looking at the cushion. I'm thinking throw the hitch based on the cushion as well. We spoke to Eddie Heckard a couple of days ago. He was an FCS All-American at Weber State. Thought about going pro, but wanted to improve his stock. Pick six is help. And Kark, you'll appreciate Eddie. He is also 
one of the barbers on the team. Now, he does say he only has cut the hair of about 15 guys. He doesn't like to take a lot of requests. Um, but in this NIL age, you got to charge a little, don't you, Andre? Yeah, yeah, you have to make a couple bucks, right? Andre's yeah. probably one of the few guys I've worked with that I haven't cut his hair. Yeah, gee, wonder why. Jaden Nixon across the 20, jump step. He's got the 30, flag down as Nixon maneuvers out close to the 40. This is usually on the return team, so I'd expect this to come back. And it's been tough. This first half for Oklahoma State, it's been tough settling in, in the red zone. Can't get the ball in the end zone. Penalties and a big turnover that led to, uh, to points, directly to points. They got to go back to Ollie Gordon and his Starting big offensive line. Illegal block in the back, receiving team, 10-yard penalty, first down. Instead of starting to drive around the 20-yard line, they're back just inside their 10. That foul was on number 15. Calling it on number 15 and didn't, didn't really see it. Ty Williams, he was, the, he was the guilty party is for Oklahoma State. So now Alan Bowman, he's got to shake off a pick six and some... Uh, salty field position right here it's been a little bit of an up and down couple of weeks for Oklahoma State they had that game at UCF where they got ambushed yeah 45 to 3 we'll run it here on first down with Gordon and then last week it almost looked for almost a half that that UCF game could beat Oklahoma State twice. They were able to course correct late in that second quarter against Houston, pulled away at the end, and off to a little bit of a slow start today against BYU. And Houston dropping another one today to UCF. And a long year for Dana Holgerson and the Cougars. And Gus Malzahn got, gets him, his, uh, his group of bowl eligible at 6-6. Six six. Gordon. Looking for a cutback lane, nothing there. He lost the yard. It'll bring up third down for Oklahoma State. You know, and he's, uh, Ali Gordon started hot. I mean, a couple of big runs. He swung him a, a pass early. They got Brennan Presley involved early. And then one, once BYU got past the script of Casey Dunn, they've been able to bottle up Ali Gordon for the most part uh, here in the, uh, the second quarter. And he's limping coming off the field, so Jaden Nixon running back here on third down. Well, Gordon started seven carries for 40 yards, since three for just five yards. Presley motions out. On the delay, Nixon's got a lot of room. And there's that tantalizing speed of first down and a gain of a dozen. Max Tooley with a tackle, and they do a nice job up front on the draw play to allow pass rushers up the field, and then they slip Jaden Nixon just underneath. Back to Nixon. Nice block on that left side. Picks up four on the play. Dalton Cooper left tackle clearing space. Ace Kafusi with a tackle. And starting to get to that second level, Anish, with regularity. And that means the offensive line is taking care of their business. Now you make one guy miss on the second level and you got a foot race. It turns into a track meet. So you got Nixon now starting to hit runs that Gordon hit early in the game. To Nixon, and this time gobbled right at the line of scrimmage. It's Von Pichon, the senior transfer from Utah State, where he was their leading tackler a year ago. And AJ Von Pichon is is a consistent player, really, really tough sideline to sideline player with good size at 6'3, 235, can really run for that outside uh, linebacker spot that they play him in. I'd like to line him up over the tight end a bunch. Ollie Gordon, the nation's leading rusher, back in on third and six. Bray, the motion man. Here comes the blitz. Bowman flushed out to his right. Nobody open. Now he finally gets rid of it. Presley, little night at the improv here in Stillwater. The heck of an ad lib by Alan Bowman, who looks like.
like he's going out of bounds and then the, the defender that's responsible for Presley decides he's got to come up and take Bowman before he gets to the first down marker. That's Eddie Hackard who had the the interception the last the previous possession. Nice job there with the flip. Using tempo off the first down. Gordon sheds the ankle tackle, drags his man to the 44 of BYU. That's what makes him so special. Yeah, I thought it was an ankle that took him out of the game a couple of plays ago, but he comes right in and, and breaks an ankle tackle uh, to get close to the first down. Bowman throws, far side, that's caught. Broken tackle by Bray. And he's pretzeled out of bounds inside the 35. 11 more, another first down. Boy, the block by Ollie Gordon is what gives Bowman the time to uh, to deliver to Jaden Bray. But we're going to have a flag here on the play. I'm not sure what that was about. The only two that were in that area were Bray and a BYU defender. It was Vaughn Pichon. Ineligible player downfield, number 66. Offense, five-yard penalty, second down. That's the center, Joe Mahalski. Well, Mahalski shouldn't be on this, this type of play, should not be down the field. Is, he's reading it out. It's not a screen. He's trying to go block on a linebacker, which is not, it's not in his job description on that type of play. Sometimes those big grunts in the middle when they don't have a guy charging at them, they, they go look up somebody to block. Gordon scavenges for a couple. It sets up 33. Boy, it just changes everything, doesn't it? When you have a, a big healthy play for a first down and you get a hold or something in the middle by the offensive line makes it tough. Now you got to convert here on third down. Free play. And Bowman throws a jump ball almost brought in by Leon Johnson. The D3 transfer. It's going to be offsides and a first down. Offside, number 92. Defense jumped into the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. That's Tyler Batty, their best defensive lineman. And has a ton of experience. Excellent edge rusher. Just going to flinch. Him. He jumps, can't get himself back. One of the leaders of their deep this defensive unit for BYU. He's a complete player, excellent pass rusher, as I mentioned, and then pretty good against the run as well. Bowman comes under center. Presley with jet motion. Gordon spins through that right side and meets resistance right at the line of scrimmage. No game. Along with a couple of other players, Mangelson in there helping out, kind of unpeeling himself from the bottle of the bottom of the pile. This BYU defense, after the first two drives, has played extremely well. And really, that second drive, Gordon, offense turns it over inside the 20. Yeah, Gordon just he just doesn't look healthy. Just doesn't look like himself there. He kind of jogged over to the sideline, limped over, and then kind of collapsed. And the trainers are checking him out now. He got a little dinged up last week, but didn't sound like anything serious from what we were told. Bowman on the move. Throws on the run, low throw, and that's a good thing. Yeah. It was higher. The DB had a beat on it, and Camden Garrett is still running. The other Weaver State transfer would have been in the end zone. The bookends from Weaver State. Camden Garrett and already Eddie Hackard has put one in the end zone. What is ailing this Cowboys offense right now? Well, it's the inability to get the running game going with uh, with Gordon. Jaden Nixon, the back on third down. Bowman checks down underneath his tight end, Josiah Johnson. He won't get there. It's fourth down. You're in no man's land here. Would not surprise me to see Mike Gundy go for it. Yeah, it, it, I think the call here is to go ahead and punt it with fourth down and a bunch. You go ahead and punt it, see if you can't nail this baby inside the 10 yard line of BYU. Fourth and seven to be exact. 
They will punt. You get the Hudson Cock to kick and Nyberg to receive. You get the fourth and five or less past midfield. Yeah, that's that's automatic go for it, but not fourth and seven. Nyberg get the fair catch at the 11. A 28-yard punt. BYU with the football and an eight-point lead. We take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Capital One. Georgia, Georgia Tech follows us. Michigan beat Ohio State earlier today. Oh, the Apple Cup tied at seven. Wazoo looking to send Washington with a nice little farewell gift as UW gets ready to leave the Pac-12. And Florida State playing without their quarterback later against Florida in a rival game. Let's laugh launches deep downfield and too much for Marion, second and ten. Texas won big last night against Texas Tech. No Michael Crabtree three theatrics, which means Texas is in the Big 12 championship. If Oklahoma State wins, it would be Cowboys and Longhorns in Arlington next weekend. If Oklahoma State loses, that means BYU won his bowl eligible and Oklahoma with rematch. Texas and a Red River rematch. But both teams playing some pretty good football here late or at the end of the year. Aiden Robbins stood up by Kendall Daniels, who plays that rover position so well. Green pass by uh, Raslav to Cody Epps over the middle. It's a middle screen that he uh, gets right up the field and there's a plenty of room in which to run there on third down to pick up the first and move the chains. A gain of 25 for Epps, who had six catches for 90 yards against Oklahoma last week. Fake to Robbins. Retzlaff down the seam. Caught in stride by Keanu Hill. What a catch. Boy, they have been waiting on this young man to get himself healthy. He's been messed with a stress fracture in his shin. has slowed him all season long. In the last couple of weeks, he's finally started to feel like his old self. Just gets behind coverage. And this one is dropped right on a dot. Here comes Robbins now, and he's dropped right at the 11 yard. Colin Oliver got him for Keanu Hill. He came back two weeks ago after missing four games. That's his first catch since coming back. He entered the season as BYU's top returning receiver. Number two on the team last year behind Puka Nakua. Yeah, and who is killing it in the NFL right, right about now. Epps, they want to get him the football. Want to feature him in the slot. Ooh, what? Reslav is off to a pretty good start. If they're able to get the ball in and BYU has called their second charge timeout. Convert their third touchdown. The first half. Timeout on the field. away Booger McFarlane Kevin Nagandi here some upsets brewing in this 330 window Bama is trailing Washington is yeah. tied highlights coming your way and you like what you saw from Michigan no doubt they dominated on, on the line of scrimmage ran the football better than Ohio State and then Sharon Moore out coach Ryan Day decided to go for it on fourth down twice and called a trick play that led to a touchdown we will have those highlights plus reaction coming up back to you Anish
Hey, Booger, is your play? Hey, play. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Running to the outside, BYU with another touchdown using misdirection. It's Marion. BYU came to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and looking for bowl eligibility, and they are off to a pretty good start here in this one. Already a pick six, and then here a little end around the Keelan Marion, and he gets himself into the end zone. BYU with a chance to go up 21-6. You can feel the fall of silence that just covered Boone Pickens Stadium. 21 to 6, BYU, a team that came into this game having lost four in a row. They've been giving up 30 plus in those games. They've got a 15 point lead on the road. Yeah, they're going to get excellent edge blocks, bring him around. And they're going to hand it off here, and he's fi going to find his way into the end zone. Elon Marion, they seal it up pretty good. Pull a couple of the guard, left guard, left tackle. Easy work on the outside. And I tell you what, if Oklahoma State's not awake right now, they better they better hurry up and wake up. A trip to the conference championship game is on the line for the Cowboys, and they're sleepwalking through the first half of this one. Now, we saw them get ambushed against UCF. Down 23 to 9 against Houston before rallying back last week. Got worked against South Alabama in week three, 33 to 7. And now this is a different team right now. This one gets away from Presley. Retreats it inside his own five. And everything that can go wrong has pretty much gone wrong in this first half for Oklahoma State. They will take over at their own five-yard line. Well, we remind you, one week from tomorrow, it is the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff selection. Reese and the guys will break down from top to bottom. Who will make it in the top four spots? What do the New Year's Six Bowls look like? Well, one cleared itself out. Or up today, Oklahoma, excuse me, Ohio State. And so Ohio State, you think, is done? I think Ohio State's out as a, uh, a playoff contender. Washington, Washington State, and then you go up in Oregon, Pac-12 championship. There's so many teams that you cannot have a hiccup at the end of the season this year. And you're watching one right now having a hiccup in the first half, Oklahoma State. They need a win to get to the Big 12 title game. If they lose today, it'll be Oklahoma that plays Texas and Arlington next week. We want Brennan Presley to we want the doctors to take a look at him. So Presley, who's got a team high four catches so far, had 15 grabs last week on the sideline. Bowman evading the pursuit. He just goes down right at the line of scrimmage Clark. Yeah, good news for Oklahoma State. Ollie Gordon's back in the game, but he was favoring that left ankle big time. And trainers retaped it. He's good to go, but he is not at 100%. And you know what he means to this team. There is Gordon out of the backfield. Broken tackle, tight rope. And he gets out to about the 12th last week against Houston. The game really turned when the Cowboys started feeding number zero. Yeah, they got to a point in the second half where they just said, forget it, we're going to go to our horse and Ollie Gordon. And they rode him all the way to a 43-30 victory. And, and it really, really it looked good in doing so. 164 yards on 25 carries for Ollie Gordon in that one. Yeah, and the adrenaline's kicking in for him. And when you think about this journey of the team with Ollie Gordon, when they were two and two, they didn't feature him at all. They won six of their last seven. He's been the hottest back in the country unequivocally. Seven 100-yard games in the last eight. He's averaging 160 plus on the ground in conference. On third down, Bowman to the air. Quick throw, and it's behind. Ooh. His target, Owens, Thank goodness it's going to bring up fourth down. Thank goodness for him, Anise, that it was behind him because Max Tooley 
Got a nice break on the football. They're in zone coverage. And Thule read the eyes of, of, uh, of Alan Bowman and just took a nice break on that football that was intended for Rashad Owens. If he throws that one anywhere towards the body of Owens, it's in the end zone and, and a big six, the second one of the ball game. These next two minutes plus become crucial in this game. BYU gets the ball, remember, to begin the third quarter. Wes Paul punts it away. Line drive kick. Kingston able to corral it. And he's going to be taken down at about the 35-yard line. Let's take a look at the mishaps for Oklahoma State so far. Setting up a screen pass here. A miscommunication with the receiver, Presley. Results in a pick six. And then on the back end, nobody accounts for a receiver running over the top. Marion on an end around gets himself into the into the end zone for BYU. So it's been mistakes by Oklahoma State mishaps and then BYU capitalizing on the other end. Rhett's left, little RPO, Roberts, tunnel screen. And dropped from behind by Colin Clay, a gain of three. Not a bad game. Roberts is kind of the go-to receiver in this offense for BYU. A big target at 6'4". They really think he's got uh, an NFL future. Good route runner, great hands. Retzlaff will keep Rex the block on the perimeter, and Retzlaff gets out of bounds. Just couldn't quite turn the corner. Nice job there by BYU. Trey Rucker keeping outside leverage, not allowing Retzlaff to turn up the field. See how he started to get the game and has been 3 of 3 for 79 yards since. 142 left, so a first down here. He yep. stopped the clock momentarily, and BYU has the time. And, and they're trying to steal a possession here because it, it would be a bonus possession if they could add points getting the ball first in the second half. Retzlaff moving the pocket, and we get a flag. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Retzlaff is trying to tell the official the clock wasn't at zero, but there was an official that wouldn't allow the ball to be snapped. So I thought that would be taken into, uh, into account. Official standing in the way and the clock is continuing to run then you get a delay of game penalty But he gets They get the they get the chance to substitute But man that that's a tough way to pick up a, a, a delay of game penalty Robbins on third down he won't get there so fourth down and Let's see if Oklahoma State calls a timeout Oklahoma State trying to steal a possession here at the end of the first half where if they go get some points. Oklahoma State has called their first charge timeout. It's a bonus. Of the first half. 30 seconds in lane. Game clock operator. Please reset the game clock for one minute. Rivalry weekend rolls on tonight on ESPN. Number five, Florida State without Travis Jordan already, or Jordan Travis um, is already in the ACC championship game. They'll take on Florida, who's without their quarterback, Graham Mertz. And then on ABC, number one, Georgia already in the SEC championship squares off against Georgia Tech for the 115th time. These two teams, BYU and Oklahoma State, haven't played since 1976. And you look at Florida State and Florida, both have a couple of active streaks. One would like to get off the schneid. It's hard to believe that it's been that one-sided in that series. 17 straight wins. Well, that's overall. That's and not I mean, series. overall, I'm just saying, it, 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 it's, that's tough. Fake punt. It's complete. Big Gator, BYU. The hurdle all the way to the 25-yard line. Tyler Batty in on 
special teams. He does everything for this team, for BYU. He's a good run stopper, I mentioned earlier. Their best pass rusher, mentioned that earlier. And can he catch passes as well? Nice throw there with Batty finishing things off. BYU came to win, Anish. They came to win, and Kalani Sataki today, he already tried an onside kick. Now a big punt, a score on an end around. He brought the entire spice rack to Stillwater. How about the speed on Batty as well? Big defensive lineman at that size. Trucking down the middle BYU of the field at 275. Third final charge time out of the half. So BYU with the play clock running down again. We'll use a timeout, 58 seconds to go. Kark, you alluded to it earlier. Kalani Sataki not afraid to take a risk. His guts are tremendous and so fitting that it's Tyler Batty who's been with the program for a while. I spoke to Tyler this week. He said things haven't gone as planned. They had high expectations for the season, but he said the trust that the team has in one another and their ability to persevere, not one quitter. And he, he made, made it clear, he said it twice, not one quitter on this team. So they're five and six, backs against the wall. They got a coach who's rolling the dice in a team full of believers. Well, and it's tough when you have eight starters on both sides of the ball coming back for BYU this year. There were lofty expectations by fans, by the team, the coaches, everything. And it just hasn't gone that way when you look at that the tough schedule that BYU had to face. I tell you what, there is no quit, and there's certainly none today in here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. One timeout has been used by BYU on this drive. So they're out of timeouts. Reds laugh off play action. Incomplete intended for Mason Bakahua. He can, he can deliver it, can he? That's why you start to look at Red Slav. And he throws for 45-96 last year at Riverside City College. 44 touchdown passes to go along with all that production, all that yardage. First team, all California, all California Junior College. Overlooked coming out of high school, senior year, washed away by COVID in California. Oklahoma State brings the blitz. Man-on-man -man coverage, and it's incomplete. Wanted Hill, and he was draped by Corey Black. Hill can take the top off the coverage. He made a big catch earlier in this game in the second quarter, and he just, he just opens up their passing game. And now Rex gets himself going. Chase Roberts gets going. It's just somebody else, Cody Epps, yeah, who made a big play in the passing game. They, they, he gets going. So one added piece helps so much. Rex, the tight end, oh, has been so good. He'll stay in the block. Retzlaff's throw is incomplete. One of Roberts, fourth down, and the BYU will likely bring the kick team on. They do. Chance to tack on three more with 42 seconds to go in the half. And Kalani Sataki told us he's, he's comfortable with Will Ferrin somewhere around the 49 and in that area. So he's going to be somewhere around 42 yards here season four or five between the 40 and 50 yard line and perfect inside 44 for 42 Ferrin's kick is good and it's 24 to 6 BYU and getting 37 seconds left in the half and getting the ball first to start the second half are the Cougars. I'm not sure a lot of folks saw this coming. BYU, Andre, until today, had not led by more than eight points on the road all season. It's, it's something that, you know, if you're a BYU fan, you are celebrating right now and just hoping to get to the finish line. If you're Oklahoma State, you're concerned. If you're an Oklahoma State fan, you are concerned because of what's at stake uh, with a loss in this game. A win puts you in the conference championship game. A loss eliminates you and, uh, and uplifts your Oklahoma, rival. your rival, into uh, the position to go play Texas once again. Now they came back last week down 23-9 to at one point against Houston. 
24 to 6 against a BYU team that made a lot of strides in a game they felt they should have won last week against Oklahoma. Here comes Presley. Lost the football. They're going to have it back. Someone they got offered it up. Oklahoma State has it. 30 seconds to go. You're down 24 to 6, Andre. How much do you try with two timeouts? Uh, I think you still have to try to get points because you're you're down in a game that's so important. You got any time on the clock, you've got to try to go get points. And you've got you have yourself a senior quarterback in Bowman. Hopefully he is uh, in tune with what you're doing offensively, especially in your two-minute offense, to spread them out and at least go get yourself a field goal. Man, physicality being brought by BYU. Both safeties well off the line for BYU. They try a delay with Gordon. Patient run. Gets to the outside and gets out of bounds. Smart. Smart got himself out of bounds. Clock stops at about 23 seconds or so. And now you're looking to hit something. You can, you can run plays even over the middle because you still have a timeout left. Two timeouts, actually. BYU rushes three with a spot. Again, the check down to Gordon. Cat and Mouse, he goes out of bounds. Pushed out by Von Kachan. Behind the line of scrimmage. Gordon wanted a late hit, so did his crowd. It's a loss on the play. The kicker for Oklahoma State, Alex Hale. Mike Gundy said if you've got an end of half, end of game situation where you need a kick, he'd push it to 55, 57 even. So, got to get there. That means you got to get to about the other team's 40 to give your squad a chance. So salty right now for BYU. Mixing up some looks. Trying to keep out Alan Bowman confused back there. And they're doing a pretty good job of it here at the end of the first half. For this BYU defense, there are two points of emphasis. Stop Ollie Gordon. He's got 14 carries for 69 yards. The other one was confused. The quarterback. Confused the quarterback. And they also wanted to tackle well in space and they, they've been able to do exactly that for the most part gordon going east west and the first half comes to an end on that play this cowboy crowd in stillwater not thrilled oklahoma state with a chance to go to the big 12 championship down 18. Now we send it to ABC News for a special report. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Saturday on ABC, presented by Tums. It's the Big 12 on ESPN. BYU in its first season in this conference needed a win today to become bowl eligible. They have ambushed Oklahoma State through the first two quarters. 24 to 6, Cougars on top. Oklahoma State needed a win today to clinch a spot in the Big 12 championship against Texas. And it's BYU to receive the third quarter kickoff, and the Cougars will take over with a few extra added yards on a kick out of bounds. Nishraf, Andre Ware, Paul Carcatero will join us in a moment. This is a surprise. What happened in the first half? Yeah, I mean, BYU came to win in the first half. They uh, took out all the stops in this one, a fake punt. Uh, tried a couple of different things, end around, every possible Outside thing. kick. It, anything that they could possibly pull out of their back pockets, they were doing it, and they get the ball first to start the second half of this one. It's been impressive. Yeah, BYU almost beat Oklahoma last week. It was a game where... Really, the Cougars' mistakes, that's what ultimately doomed them against the Sooners. And let's check in with Paul Carcaterra. Well, Nish, you saw the onside kick. You saw the fake punt. I just asked Kalani Sataki moments ago why. He said we're five and six, and we need to get into a ball. He said he was upset that he hadn't been that aggressive throughout the course of the year. He's rolling the dice, and his players are feeling the energy. He also made a point that the guys up front on both sides of the ball have been a deciding factor thus far. Yeah, BYU right now, they can hit on 18. 
Rets left. Zone read. Keeper. And devoured by Kendall Daniels. The Oklahoma State Rover, who last year was the defensive freshman of the year in the conference. And Daniels, sideline to sideline player. Great measurables at 6'4", 213. Big safety or slot rovers, as they like to call him here. But a big play here to start the second half. And paint still probably peeling off the wall in the Oklahoma State locker room after Coach Gundy's halftime speech. Four-man rush. Retzlaff throws the screen. Robbins tackled for a loss back at the original line of scrimmage, fourth and ten, and the Cowboys come out of the gates and get a three and out defensively. Yeah, really nowhere to go with the football down the field for Dick Retzlaff. And so he's forced to check it down. It's just about four Cowboy defenders came up and made a nice stop for a loss. Rico to punt. This time it's a true punt, and Presley will let this bounce. Takes an Oklahoma State bounce and down to at the 36. Kark, after the UCF loss, the following day when the team met, Mike Gundy was calm. How was he at halftime? Beyond calm. I was actually shocked. I mean, look what's riding on this game. You win, you go to the Big 12 championship, right? Nothing else has to happen. You control your own destiny. He was super calm. He was relaxed, and you felt a sense of confidence, too. He said they lost their balance offensively, and that's what they need. He said they were relying on one of the pass or the run too much later in that second quarter, but expect serious balance in Allen Bowman. He told his quarterback, just relax. Gordon picks up the blitz. Bowman throws, and he's got Presley across midfield. The wiggles his way inside the 45 of BYU, a gain of 21. A nice relaxed throw there by Allen Bowman to Presley, his leading receiver, and they need to figure out how they're going to get Presley more involved and how to open up some more running room or holes for Ollie Gordon, their two playmakers. Five catches for Presley, 15 last week. He's the motion man. Bowman moves the pocket, finds Presley in the flat, out of bounds across the 40 for a gain of five, pushed out by Jacob Robinson. Yeah, Ali Gordon had 25 carries last week. He's at 15 now. Presley had 15 receptions last week. He's only at six, so he had to force feed those two guys the, the entire second half and, and figure out how to get them going. Gordon is the running back in the pistol, the nation's leading rusher. The fake to Gordon, the slant caught by Leon Johnson. And using that big 6-5 frame to pull Cougars inside the 15. Now they run the double slant with Presley as well as Johnson the third. And Bowman decides to go to the second. Second slant route, which kind of clears itself because of the route Presley ran. It drew Eddie Hackard inside and cleared a nice little throwing lane out for Bowman to hit his big target, Leon Johnson. Johnson stepped up earlier this year when Jaden Gray was out. His team has dealt with injuries at wide receiver, Stribling, Shetron. Gray was out for a while, going to the end zone. Flag down intended for Presley. And they're, they're shadowing Presley with Eddie Hackard. So he is traveling with Brennan Presley all over the field. We got him for maybe a hold on that. Uh, on that play. Pass interference, number five, defense. Ball he placed at the two-yard line, automatic first down. Let's see where they get Acker. You see him traveling with Presley, so you know it's man-to-man. -man. And just a grab of the jersey. At some point, you got to let it go, Eddie. <laughs> they will see it. Acker had the pick six earlier. 24 unanswered by BYU after Oklahoma State got field goals on its first two possessions and been down here before and all they could manage to get out of it were the two field goals that you were talking about. Gordon's got 15 rushing touchdowns. 
Make it 16. Not this time, though. Figured out how to get the big fella into the end zone. touchdowns this year for Holly Gordon. He's second. PAT is good. And Oklahoma State has its first touchdown of the game. Who else? Ollie Gordon in for six. Get him going downhill. Getting them closer in this game. 24-13 now. Week 13 of the college football regular season, and we look at the All-State playoff predictor. Andre, you said no on Ohio State, still 64% according to All-State's playoff predictor. And something dramatic <laughs> would have to happen for Ohio State at this point to get in after Michigan beating them for the third year in a row. Michigan, I think, clearly in. They're able to take care of business in the Big Ten championship game. I think that's where you'll see some of that turn, right? You have to account yeah. for conference championships. That is one of the key criteria for the selection committee. Keelan Marion dumped across the 25, and that's where BYU begins. Let's see if Reslav can keep this offense going. With a long 80 yard drive earlier, and I don't need to continue scoring here before you allow any of this momentum to get traction for Oklahoma State. And it's just the fourth start at this level for Jake Redslap. Came in a few weeks ago for the injured Keaton Slovis. Slovis, the former USC quarterback, played at Pittsburgh last year. Here's pressure. Retzlaff has to get rid of it, intended for L.J. Martin, and it's broken up, incomplete. Justin Kirkland detonating that play for the Cowboy defense. Big fella. Big fella's got the high pants going. He can move a little bit faster. But right out there in space making plays as a defensive lineman. A nose tackle at that. He's a Utah native. Began his career at Utah Tech, FCS school. On the fly sweep. Here's some room on the outside. It's Marion. And a first down for BYU. 17 Keelan Marion. A nice block by Isaac Ricks. The tight end out on the edges. And that allowed for Marion to turn the corner. He has some speed as well to, to kind of accelerate and get himself around the corner. Just the presence of a running quarterback has opened up so much of the BYU run game the last few weeks. Forces you to play 11-on-11 11 11 defensively. Two tight ends stacked to the right. Martin gets the handoff. And he is out for the 42-yard line, the true freshman from El Paso. And into the game is BYU's leading rusher. Played more earlier in the year with Robbins banged up. And then lately they've tried to try to get him a little more work. And Robbins has been really the feature back the last few weeks. Almost identical stat lines for both teams. Both teams of 95 yards rushing. Oklahoma State one more passing yard than BYU. Robbins is stopped, and it brings up a third down. Kendall Daniels again. We've said his name a lot. And just having a tough go of it, going between the tackles with Robbins. Not being moved inside are the Cowboys. And 
And the force you to go bounce those runs outside. BYU, two for seven on third down, 28% on the season coming into play, which was last in the Big 12. Play clock winding down. They just get it off. Rets left to the air. A lot of contact. No flag. Oh, this ball slipped out of his hands or hand or water if it was tipped. But man, it just hung up in the air forever. I don't believe that it just slipped out of the hand of Ritz, Ritz laugh. Anything there, Andre? It was a little hold at the end, but it looked like when the ball was in the air, yeah. Camp Smith is engaged with the receiver. Presley lets this bounce, has some English on it, and downed at the 17-yard line. So Oklahoma State scored on its first possession of the third quarter. BYU still leading by 11. The AT&T Countdown to the College Football Playoff National Championship, Monday, January 8th on ESPN. It's tonight's AFLAC trivia question. Well, Lavelle Edwards is the answer to part one, and you know who played, or uh, who Mike Gundy played for. Oh, yeah, I do. Lonnie Sataki, Mike Gundy, coached at their own models, who were their coaches. Oklahoma State starting to assert himself with that big 6-5 frame and it's just a simple slant route trying to give Alan Bowman an easy throw to get his confidence going and maybe just maybe Oklahoma State has time to get to that ninth win and a trip to the Big 12 championship game. across midfield he's closing in on yet another 100 yard game well, the offensive line starting to effectively get Gordon to the second level and then now once they do that it's his job to make the guy on the third level miss and turn you know, some pretty average runs into big plays he's been able to do it here 17 carries, 94 yards for Gordon. Off play action. Bowman throws it away. Andre, earlier this year, Gordon had back-to-back -back games where he just went There hammered. is no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the pocket and legally grounded the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. Second down. Gordon went for 282 and 271 mm. in back-to-back -back weeks. You played with and against the only other guy at Oklahoma State to do that. Yeah, Barry Sanders, and and uh, he was special. When you look at the season he had, I don't know that any running back will ever be able to, to duplicate what he did at Oklahoma State his last year. Short pass completed. It's Gordon, third down. You know, gentlemen, when you watch Ollie Gordon, too, he plays with such passion and effort. And his teammate, Brennan Presley, told me you would think he's a zero-star recruit, massive chip on his shoulder, and he never wears down. Presley said he spices up when teams try to stop him, and in the second half, he only gets better. Boy, do they need him now. They need him. They need Presley to get himself going. Flag down. Is. Johnson didn't kind of create some room, but I think this is going to be against BYU in the secondary. 
Pride of the pass, holding number five. Defense, Kelly's the climb. He's all the plays, completed pass, first down, Oklahoma State. Find it here. Yes. I see number five in the front. Well, he's down at the bottom. He's been following Eddie Haggard. He's been following Presley around. So it's, wherever that foul was, it was and it's him working against hit, uh, Presley. To the outside, Presley. And he spun down for a first down and now a flag at the end of the play. Presley went down funny. Was he tackled by the horse collar or the face mask? Or is this coming back? Looks like it might be coming back. You know, this is offensive interference where they ran holding a pick. number 17. Offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's still first down. You know, it's Leon Johnson actually blocking for Brennan Presley once the ball is caught. So you're going to see number 17 in a work. It's Crew Wakely, and just grabs him by the back of the jersey. I don't know. He kind of threw him. I don't know if there's much of a hole there. So it sets up a first and 12. The spot of the foul is at the 25-yard line. First down. Although back it up three more yards, first and 15. I like the response that Oklahoma State has shown here in the second half. Nothing is recorded. Tyler Batty in on the play. He's having some game, isn't he? Separate and aside from the fake punt reception that Tyler Batty caught for a first down. He has uh, done some pretty good things on the defensive side as well. Came into the game leading BYU in sacks. He has been the most consistent defensive player. Kind of an empty set. BYU rushes three. Bowman pump fakes and they get home with three. Yes, it's Batty. Yes, who? Start talking about a guy maybe he hears you. Coach contributing in a major way, already a big part of this game for BYU. At the top of the screen, coming off the edge, just a power rush to get to Bowman, who just, I guess you think he thought he was more protected than he actually was, and that he had other ideas. Only the 11th sack of the season for BYU, just the sixth in conference play. Low snap. Johnson on the drag route had to make the first guy miss and he can't get past Thule. It'll bring up fourth down. A heck of an open field tackle by Thule. Thule has been all over the field along with Batty. Two, two defensive players and we've called their names a lot uh, here in this game. And when you turn on the film, Thule seems to be in yeah. almost every other play for BYU. He does. He is a sideline to sideline player. And you see Batty a lot as well. Two guys that are really stepping up here at the, in the, uh, the third quarter of this one. Nyberg waits inside the 10. Cock to kick it away. Fair catch is made right at the 10. BYU looking to become bowl eligible. Oklahoma State wants to get to Arlington. Cougars looking to play spoiler in Stillwater. Let's answer the Aflac trivia question. Kalani Sataki and Mike Gundy, both coach at their alma mater. So who were their coaches? Kalani, not Kanani. Kalani played for the legendary Lavelle Edwards. Mike Gundy's teams with Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, Hartley Dykes, Pat Jones at the helm. Pretty good teams. Doing that run in that era. Let's laugh under pressure, has to throw it away. That's not pass interference. That ball was behind the line of scrimmage. You played against those teams. Yeah. Played against 
the uh, my freshman year against Pat Jones and that talented Cowboy team with Barry and Mike Gundy as his quarterback and Thurman Thomas and Hartley Dykes. They were really, really good. He gave us a spanking that opening game of the season. to Robbins into a sea of orange and black for a short game. Third down. Trying to get back on schedule are the Cougars of BYU with Aiden Robbins and big physical downhill runner at 6'3", 240. Just can't seem to get him going though. I mean, I know the stat number is looks good. 11 carries, 64 yards, but they're expecting much more out of Robbins in this one. And something BYU hasn't had today, much of the quarterback run game. Third downs continue to be a struggle as well. No quarterback draws attracted with this look. Instead, another run to Robbins. He won't get there. And Oklahoma State will get it back. Just a different look to this Oklahoma State team after halftime. I know Paul said that Coach Gundy was calm, cool, calm, and collected. I don't know. It took him a while to come out of the locker room after halftime. That's usually where furniture's moving. Now, the team was not out on the field until about 90 seconds before the second half kick. Presley lets this bounce. Soggy field, it rolls inside the 35 down to the 32. Next week, Monday Night Football takes us to Minneapolis. NFC North matchup between the Bears and Vikings. Almost shockingly, Kirk Cousins goes down. We thought maybe a fire sale with the Vikings trade away all their pieces. Now no, Josh Dobbs is coming down. No. The rocket scientist. Picked up Josh Dobbs on my fantasy team. <laughs> Man's playing some pretty good football. Two and one since. 66% completion rate. And responsible for seven touchdowns. He's getting it done in the air and on the ground. Bowman will try it through the air. And he's got Gray. Last week, Gray returned to the lineup after missing three games. Something to look at. You saw Tyler Batty sack on that last timeout. Offensive line coach for Oklahoma State, Charlie Dickey, was not pleased. He said, they got to Bowman with a three-man rush. You're better than that. That can't happen. So let's see if BYU brings the house or just stays with their typical three-man front rush. We've already changed things by going four-man front. Bowman's got time. Incomplete for Presley. That was a wrinkle that we saw last week from BYU. Uh, they've been using mostly odd man fronts for most of the season. They went to a four man front against Oklahoma. Yeah, and they were able to get some production. And they've been in this game going back and forth between three and four man fronts. Uh, for the most part or the better part of this game and just trying to confuse the offensive line confuse pass protections And help out uh, in the secondary when they go three-man front I will bring pressure Here's Presley. That's Cassidy He's tackled right at the line of scrimmage no gain Braden Cassidy originally came to Oklahoma State as a defensive end moved to that H-back role yeah, a short game right around the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> you run those crossing routes. You want to be building to about five yards and flatten off if you have to. Nobody was around, and he just kind of ran the route right at the line of scrimmage. So when he caught it and was tackled, there was no gain on the play. He has three receptions this year for a total of zero yards. Bowman stands in the pocket and delivers a strike to his tight end, Josiah Johnson. First down. And the 20th catch of the year for... For Johnson, as you mentioned, on a crossing route, Bowman's looking to his left, and then all of a sudden Johnson kind of comes right into his vision, crossing from right to left. Nice throw and catch, and the timing was perfect. Johnson in high school was Mac Jones's backup quarterback. Bowman down the left sideline for Bray, incomplete, covered by Eddie Heck. 
Yeah, you can see that they're trying to open things up offensively, maybe get back away BYU from the line of scrimmage a little bit, maybe defend the pass, and then come right back underneath to Ollie Gordon, who is uh, very much back on the field for Oklahoma State. Gordon at 94 yards. Six rushing yards away from his eighth 100-yard game of the season. Another three-man rush. And a whistle. All start. All start. Number 10. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Owens, the wide receiver. Drive you crazy as a coach because all the guys got to do is go line up and look down the line of scrimmage. And when the ball snap, run your route. So really never an excuse for a receiver to jump or flinch. Second and 15, Bowman. Juggling INT on the sideline, and BYU gets it back late in the third. Does he actually come Going down? The field is an interception first in down bounds. BYU. This is going to be looked at. It's Bob, he bobbles it. Oh, yeah, one definitely. Foot. The only question is... We got both. Both down. It's hard yeah. to see from that first angle. Right here at the end. Here does that foot go down? Yeah, it looks like he's got one foot in. Well, his right foot's definitely in, and that's all he needs, but I think he's going to get the left couple of toes down inbounds as well. This is the interception in, a, in BYU football. That's good in any league. It's good on Sundays. That's a heck of a job of concentrating. And then knowing where the sideline is, and you got to tap to get him down. Heck of a play. He had a big time one handed interception against Texas Tech earlier. Mm -hmm. And Red Slap almost gave it right back. Cam Smith was there. Marion was the target. And Red Slap has avoided at least two or three interceptions today. He's been lucky. Just six of 16 passes. You know what he looks like to me? A guy that hadn't played a whole lot of football this year. That's what he looks like right now. And, and a guy that is uh, struggling to get on the same page with his receiving group. Because he's just a little bit in front, a little bit behind, a little bit high. Not smooth quite yet. Ooh, Robbins taken down for a loss of two. What a tackle by Colin Oliver. Whoa. Tackling machine, big time playmaker, and their best defender making plays for Oklahoma State, but it's BYU up 24-13, heading to the fourth. If you win this game, you go to the Big 12 championship. What gives you the confidence you could get it done? Well, we've got to get a stop on defense again. We've done a better job in the second half. And then offensively, we got to stay balanced, okay? We had it going there a second ago, and we got penalties. So if we stay balanced, we'll be in good shape. Thank you, Coach. Big third down and 12. Retzlaff completes to Epps. He's not going to get there. It'll be about a couple of yards shy. So fourth down and two. Offense looking to the sideline. The punt team comes on, and Kalani Sataki has already made it clear. You're five and six. You're playing for bowl eligibility. He's not afraid to dig into the bag of tricks. Now he's run one fake punt already, and yeah, don't be surprised. This is usually around the area of the field, and if you were going to pull out another one, this would be where it would be uh, be done. That's Daddy there faking the uh, the snap. Rico will kick. Presley makes the fair catch inside the 15. 
The F1 season finale is in Abu Dhabi tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. on ESPN. Grand Prix Sunday begins our pre-race coverage starting at 6.30. A lot of drama earlier today. Michigan held off Ohio State. So the Wolverines get to the Big Ten championship game. You got Florida, Florida State. You got Georgia, Georgia Tech. Emma and Auburn going at it. The Apple Cup has high stakes for you, Dub. Not this one right now. A lot at stake here. Slant is thrown behind and incomplete for Owens. Second to ten. Alan Bowman just has not had the same rhythm that we've seen him when he's been on this season. And he's been erratic at times this year. Yeah, ten of sixteen for just a hundred yards in the second half of this one. And he's just been, you know, inconsistent is, uh, I guess, the best word to, to describe Alan Bowman. Ali Gordon absorbs the hit, picks up three, up to 97 yards rushing. Came into the game averaging 163 per game in conference play. And a big third down here for field position purposes. You want to convert here so that you can flip the field at worst uh, for your team and, and, and put BYU in a position where they're backed up. you got to convert right now. Here's the blitz. Picked up. Bowman's throw. Caught. Leon Johnson with a first down and a gain of 19. Boy, that ball hung in the air for a long, long time. And it took Alfrey, who could, just could not get there. It was in the air forever. Going through your progression, hung in the air for a while, and telling Alfrey just could not break on the football. Ollie Gordon gets the call. Trying to find some room and ground hogs ahead for two. I'm impressed. I mean, he has got a good uh, yards per carry average at five. 20 carries for about 100 yards or so before that carry. He's kind of holding him in check, not really allowing him to break off big runs. Bowman downfield. Owens pulls it away. Rashad Owens with a first down. State into BYU territory. Somebody gambled on the football for BYU. I think it's Jacob Robinson and did not tack, make the tackle on Owens who picked up some ac extra yardage. It's his first catch of the game. Gordon now north of 100 yards rushing for the eighth time this season and for the eighth time in nine games. <laughs> Starting center for Oklahoma State, Mahalski is down. He's played at a high level this year. Yeah. Started a bunch of games here at Oklahoma State. 20 career starts for Joe Mahalski. Hopefully, he's okay. Here is where Joe Mahalski gets hurt. You're watching number 66 on the left side, and it looks like just some friendly fire. And Dalton Cooper is uh, left tackle. And it plays to his left. He's friendly fire. So the redshirt freshman, number 51, Austin Kowecki from Frisco, Texas, into the game at center. Ollie Gordon gets the call. And he makes his way across the line to gain. Andre with Ollie Gordon. There's been a trend all season long. He gets stronger in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he gets stronger. He's a bigger back at 6'1", about 2'12 or so. The more carries he gets, the better. 25 of them last year. I mean, last week, well, getting close to, to that number. Mahalski back in the slant to Owens. His second catch takes Oklahoma State inside the 10. First and goal. Boy, Presley has done his thing. Now you start to see the others show up. The Leon Johnson, now Rashad Owens on this drive. Contributing. Boom into the air, another slant incomplete. And now we get a flag. He wanted Leon Johnson. Camden Garrett was the man in coverage. We're here in the second half of this one. BYU 
just 32 yards of offense for Oklahoma State. It's 159 and plays six plays of 15 yards or more here in the second half. Pass interference number seven defense foul occurred in the end zone. Ball replaced at the two yard line. Automatic first down. The penalties helping. Chunk plays starting to help this Oklahoma State offense and. Yeah, the big bodied receivers, Leon Johnson trying to use his frame. And it's Mark Garrett that is a little bit early. Go back to the first quarter. Oklahoma State had it down here. Yeah. Had to settle for a field goal twice. Had it inside the red zone and had to come away with field goal. High snap, Ollie Gordon. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Flag down. Out. I, didn't, I wasn't convinced that, or as convinced as the official that Ollie Gordon had gotten himself into the end zone. I thought he was actually a little bit short of the Illegal goal line. Substitution. Defense, the 12th player never made it off the field. That penalty is declined. Ruling on the field is a touchdown. Let's take a look. They're going to take a look upstairs. They review every anyway, play. Every play. Six Oklahoma feet, yeah. State lining up for two, and we don't get a stoppage for a review. Again, the ball just has to break the very front of the goal line. Review. Now they will take an extended look. And he is stretching it. I don't know that he's there. That is down, and I'm not sure that ball's touching, but... Enough to overturn. Exactly. There's not. I don't think there's enough video evidence. That angle doesn't do it for me. This one, I'm sure, won't do it for me. But you, you can't may be tell able where to, the ball is to blend those two angles together, which they are able to do. Yes, in the replay booth. And that's close. Of where he hit. Where's the ball when his knee touches down? That's the question. I thought initially he was short. there where the knee is so and the, the ruling on the field was touchdown if there's, a, if there's not a view or an angle that shows without any doubt whatsoever then the ruling on the field will will stand that's right what I think is going to happen it does stand this would be Gordon's 13th rushing touchdown in the last six games wow there have been some spectacular running backs to come through Stillwater, and it's not just Barry, Thurman Thomas, in recent years, Chuba Hubbard, and Justice Hill. After review, ruling on the field of touchdown stands. Not enough there to overturn. Yeah, kind of what we thought. There's not enough there to overturn it. And Ali Gordon has put together a season worthy of the Doak Walker Award. He's got to be in the discussion for Big 12 Player of the Year. Certainly, if Oklahoma State wins this game and plays for a Big 12 championship. And now, here come the Cowboys lining up for two. So they want to make it a three-point game, and this makes sense. Even if you don't get it, you still need a touchdown. The defense has shut out BYU in the second half. Gordon is the running back. Presley motions. Home into the air. Backpedaling. Floats it to Owens. The conversion is good. And it's 24-21. 10-53 left. We got a fantastic finish ahead. This next 10-53 ought to be exciting for all fans watching. Oklahoma State inching ever so close back into this thing. Two-point conversion to Owens is good, 24-21. ABC College Football is presented by Tom's. Tackle game day heartburn fast and love food back. 
use as directed. And in part by Goodyear. Discover the possibilities. Goodyear, more driven. Charlie Weatherby was the Oklahoma State quarterback the last time these two teams played. They've only met twice before, both in the postseason. The 74 Fiesta Bowl, the first meeting, the 76-team Dream Bowl. BYU had a wide receiver in that Tangerine Bowl by the name of Brian Billick. Todd Christensen was the Cougars running back. Let's check in with Kevin Nagandi. And each at and keeping fans connected as we take a look at our multi-view, which is showcasing a bunch of great games across our networks. Arizona up big in the Territorial Cup against Arizona State over on ESPN. James Madison trying to get back on track after their first loss. That game over on ESPN, too. Tennessee dominating Vandy on the SEC Network. And it's all Virginia Tech against Virginia on the ACC Network. Back to Anish, Andre, and Paul. Kevin, thank you. It was rivalry week. Week 13 on at stake here. BYU needs a win to go bowling. Oklahoma State needs a win to go to the Big 12 championship. Incomplete on first down intended for Epps. It's second and 10. And in the first half, Cougars scored 24 straight. They led 24-6 at halftime. Second half, BYU's offense in witness protection. And Oklahoma State has scored 15 unanswered. Yeah, 15 unanswered. 188 yards here in the second half for Oklahoma State. Only 32 for BYU. So they're going to close this deal out. They got to get this offense restarted and, uh, and producing again. On the end of round, here is Marion. Ankle tackled by Nicholas Martin. Four in orange, leading the conference in tackles, and he's on the short list of Defensive Player of the Year candidates. Yeah, and I know he's a, run, a linebacker, but he can really, really, really run. One of the fastest players in this Oklahoma State program. Third down. Oklahoma State came into the game ranked last in the Big 12 in passing defense and total defense. This is huge for both sides. Oklahoma State needs the football. Get off the field on third down. BYU has struggled to throw the ball. Retzlaff working the pocket. And he's got good old reliable King Isaac. Isaac Rex for nine and a first down. <laughs> the old Eagle Scout, Isaac Rex, making plays. Very talented. And one of the all-time greats at this, in school history at tight end. Just a little crossing route. And before Rest Life pulls it down to run, he just kind of flashes right into his sight. In the football for a first down. A huge first down at this point in time in the game. Out of a two tight end set. Retzlaff has to get rid of it incomplete. The pressure was coming. That's a good incompletion right there. Yeah, that's Nick Martin. 100 tackles on the season. He told me he's been chasing players down since he was five. He's the youngest in his youth league in Texarkana, Texas. Fell in love with the game at such a young age because he loved the hitting aspect. And when you watch him field level, Andre, this young man has instincts. Yeah, he's an excellent pass rusher. Good open field tackler, and we saw his ability, Cart, to run down guys from the middle of the field. He's a human tempest. Epps on the fly sweep to the 40. And another third down for BYU. Just three of 11 on third. Be surprised if they don't try to get Retzlaff involved in some type of quarterback run here. Spread the formation where they are on the field is perfect for it. There's a lot of room for him to spread everybody out and then keep the football. Oklahoma State defensively has done a nice job today limiting BYU's quarterback run. Robbins, the big 6'3", 240-pound bruiser, is in the backfield. Underneath 
to the left left, way off target, one at Epps. It's fourth down, and Rico leads the punt team on. And his own coverage, and Epps was trying to sit down in an area. Red's left is actually trying to draw him out of the area to move back outside with the throw, and it was just well off the mark. Presley makes the fair catch at the 18. A 41-yard kick. Cowboys down three. They've got the football with eight and a half to go. Take a look at the Oklahoma State offensive production. Ollie Gordon getting them, got the, the scoring started on a touchdown run, came back, got himself back into the end zone a second time, then a two point conversion to Rashad Owens. That got things going for Oklahoma State and drove closer to a three point ball game here down the stretch. Ali Gordon on first down, bulldozes ahead for four, and it would not surprise anybody who has followed Cowboy football this season to see a steady dose of number zero over these final eight minutes plus. Would it surprise you if they just turned around, handed it to him every play on this drive and said, hey, take us home, big fella? Against West Virginia, what do they have, about 150 yards rushing in the fourth quarter? Bowman will throw, and that's dropped by Gordon. Now third down coming up. The good thing there was that it stops the clock with the incomplete pass. So 8.01 left. Big third down conversion here. Third and six so is very manageable for Allen Bowman and, uh, and his Oklahoma State offense. A wet and a rainy afternoon in Stillwater. Where's Presley? That's usually where they go on third down. He's the motion man. Bowman throwing his way. A lot of contact. No flag. The coverage by Eddie Heckard. Ollie Gordon with his hands held apart looking for that penalty marker. It's not there, and Oklahoma State's got a punt. And Heckard with two interceptions already in this game, and they still continue to go to Presley where he's traveled all game long. And he's like, hey, I'm going to teach you to quit messing with me. Eddie Hecker, we spoke to him. Big personality. He does. Confident player in a good way. Kingston waiting at the 39 for BYU. Hold on! Oh, what a Retreating Ooh. inside the 30 and tackled right away. He never called for a fair catch. That's some catch that he made because that ball almost came out. Big, big time tackle on special teams by Parker Robinson. Robertson, I'm sorry. And hey, what? Kingston almost, this ball almost came out. Any, if, if Robertson's there any earlier, I believe that's a fumble. And Oklahoma State's got a bunch of players down around the ball. Go get Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Tuesday's featured college basketball matchups include Eastern Illinois against Kansas. Nichols and number 13 Baylor. Big one for the Bears against Florida last night. Oral Roberts and K State. If you're a Big 12 fan, you gotta have it. Sign up today at ESPN. Yeah, the schools are in the Big 12 now. Com slash Big 12. You need to have it. It's LJ Martin on first down to the 30. All right, Andre. I can't miss any hoop games. I know you can't. Especially Kelvin Sampson's done a nice job there, Heck but yeah. here today, BYU in the second half, how did they get their offense going now? What worked in the first half? Well, first half, it was mixing and matching with Robbins along with Red's laugh. And this half, it's the Oklahoma State has you know, done a pretty good job of slowing down the running game. They forced Red's laugh to miss three of 13 since starting five of eight. That's the difference here in the second half. Just before the start at this level for Retzlaff. He'll keep it. Spins away and got maybe a half yard. Xavier Benson with the tackle for Oklahoma State. Nice play defensively. That guy's making plays. And we talked about the strength of this Oklahoma State 
Defense, it's the linebackers. Colin Oliver, Nicholas Martin, and then now Xavier Benson in making plays. Now for Retzlaff. Got to remember, your team still has the lead. He's had some mistakes. Can't make one here. Over these last few weeks, as dynamic as he's been at times, and especially one that gives Oklahoma State the football. They run the ball to Martin. He lunges Close. forward. And you know what? The way Kalani Sataki has managed this game, if they don't get this, it would not surprise me that they try to get the one yard and go for it. He's definitely on the field, short. The runner is short of the line again. It's fourth down. First. The way Kalani Sataki has managed this entire game, it's been go for it. There's nothing to lose. Right. And I would, I would actually try to draw Oklahoma State offside. Go ahead and take the uh, timeout and then come back and run a play for a yard. You got a 6'3", 240-pound back that has had a pretty good game here. He's averaging five, five yards a carry. The play clock down to one, and we get a timeout. BYU will think about it. 534 left in Stillwater. Everything at stake. ESPN College Football Saturday on ABC presented by Tums. Punt team coming on for BYU. So fourth down and one. Let the play clock wind down. Call the timeout. Now they'll punt. They've tried a fake punt. They actually recovered an onside kick, but it was called back on a penalty. We've seen a few end arounds. Kalani Sataki is coaching this game like there's nothing to lose and nothing would be a surprise here on fourth and short except maybe this Rico with a booming punt into the end zone and it flips the field Oklahoma State will start at the 20 yard line down three with 523 left in regulation big drive here for Alan Bowman and this Oklahoma State offense what do you think went into that decision for Kalani Sataki? Was it just that the offense hadn't done enough if you gave Oklahoma State a short field? You don't have confidence in your offense right now to move the ball? Well, I don't know. I don't think it's about the confidence of the offense. I think it's about the confidence of the defensive side of the ball where they've had some stops as of late uh, and forced some punts of, uh, of Oklahoma State. So he's relying now on his defense to get the job done to force another punt here by Oklahoma State. Mike Gundy's got all three timeouts. On first down, Ollie Gordon got a yard to the 21. Not much running room. Seven carries, 27 yards in the fourth quarter for Gordon. 116 two rushing touchdowns for the game. Yeah, and I would I would kind of speed this up a little bit if I were Oklahoma State. I know they have all three timeouts, but uh, this game is getting close under five minutes or so. Leon Johnson with yet another reception. His eighth catch. He goes over 100 yards and moves the chains. So an excellent route by Johnson. Cam Camden Garrett was still going up the field as Leon Johnson was breaking his route off. Watch him here. He just kind of snaps that thing off. And when you get that type of separation, it makes it an easy throw for the quarterback. Gordon. Punch again, a yard. Jackson Craven's got in there first. Well, they are selling out and we're on run defense. Aren't they? You? Absolutely. There's no way if I'm BYU, I'm going to let Ollie Gordon beat me. Not on a run for a big game. They are. You know, basically sacrificing eight guys for seven, eight guys to the box every single time. Alan Bowman has thrown two picks today. 26 out of 41. Here's the blitz. Bowman to the sideline. It's caught. Presley. He just He's going to be a little, a little shy, about a yard or two. Third and two coming up. Third and two, no harm, no foul if you're BYU on that one because the clock's still running at 
350 or so. Oklahoma State has three timeouts, so do you look at this now across the 40 as four down territory? I think so once you know you pick up if they're able to pick up this first down for sure here on third down going forward I think it's four down territory no doubt about it BYU loading up the box Ollie Gordon the running back in the offset pistol running behind his fullback no it's an RPO and it's incomplete wanted Presley It'll bring up fourth down, and now a decision for Oklahoma State. Bowman looking to the sideline, nobody moving. So close to Kent for Eddie Hacker. With it would have been his third interception. This one kind of got away from Bowman and has slipped. The ball's tailing inside to where Hacker was positioned. A huge fourth down play here. The clock is under 10, yeah. and Bowman and the offense out. just looking to the sideline, and they will take Oklahoma a timeout. Oklahoma State has called their first charge time out of the half. Well, we need a play for Batty. In we need a play from Tooley. Hacker, one of some of these guys that are playmakers on the defensive side of the football for BYU, and if you're Oklahoma State, with this down and distance, you're talking to your offensive line about figuring out a way to get either protect and give Bowman time to look down the field or open it up a hole for uh, for Ollie Gordon. ACC SEC challenges for men's college basketball Tuesday. Number 10 Miami off the final four run taking on Kentucky Clemson against number 17 Alabama. That rivalry goes to the hardwood here. And the offense will come out. I was going to say, Oklahoma State's defense has put the shackles on BYU in the second half. But the offense will come out here on fourth down. Yeah. They could the two receivers lined up. You could punt it, essentially. Pooch you have, kick it. You have the two timeouts, exactly. Pooch kick it, try to get it down and inside the 10, call the timeouts, extend the game, and get one more possession. But you've got the ball. Take care of it now. Bowman to Nixon. Bulldozing forward for the first down. Ran over Eddie Hecker. Hecker got pumped by Joe Mahalski, the center, after making that heck of a tackle. Just couldn't get there fast enough to stop him shy of the first down marker, but that's a pretty good tackle in the open field. Presley now motions. Bowman looks to Presley, ran a little hitch route, and he takes it into BYU territory, a gain of nine. And we're under 2.40 to play here in regulation. A field goal ties it, a touchdown could win it. Bowman downfield into coverage, it's caught. First down inside the 25, Leon Johnson. His ninth catch. I love the courage of Alan Bowman going at the guy that picked him off twice in this ball game. Going right at Eddie Hecker to his big target, Leon Johnson. And I'll tell you what, they have caught lightning in a bottle. Rashad Owens has played very well, and so has Brennan Presley. Bowman the showman, five of six on this drive. Now Gordon navigates the path to the 21, a gain of three on the play. Second down. And keep in mind, a field goal ties this thing. A touchdown uh, makes all the difference for Oklahoma State. Gordon again. Running behind his tight end. when he came down of his own player. So I thought it would have been a first down here. They've got an injured player down, or is it a timeout? It's the tight end to Johnson. Grad transfer from UMass. 107 left. It's third and one. Andre, if you're Kalani Sataki, you've got a three-point lead. You hold him to a field goal. 
it's still a tie game. Are you thinking about timeouts here or no? I think you should be thinking about it if you, you know, <laughs> you don't want to go into uh, that word, the two words, if, uh, if you're Kalani Sataki, they want, it starts with an O. But uh, two tight ends, Gordon running weak side. time on the clock for BYU with 53 seconds but they're gonna have to come out throwing it with Jake Raslov and he's 8 of 21 in this ball game for just 108 yards but to bounce it outside Ollie Gordon with his speed to change directions nothing inside and he finally bounces one and finds Pater the number one rusher in college football, 141 yards, three touchdowns. The PAT is no good, and BYU oh, can oh, still oh, tie it oh. with a field goal with 53 seconds oh, to boy. go. It just got, got, uh, got interesting just now. Did. And the Cougars have two timeouts. Oh, boy, just looked like a, a block. Just a block. Gonna get tall right in the middle for BYU. Blake Mangelson got his hand on it. So now everything's important. And Where you place the kick, make sure you're not kicking it out of bounds. Nothing has come easy for either of these teams today. BYU sloppy early. They got down six nothing. They held Oklahoma State to a couple of early field goals. Then responded with 24 straight to close the first half. Cowboys with 21 unanswered since halftime. Now BYU will try to find its offense. They have not had much success with the football in the second half. Two timeouts, 53 seconds to go. BYU needs a win to go bowling. Oklahoma State with a win would play Texas next week in the Big 12 championship. as we catch your breath, Kevin DeGandhi. And these, we're trying to catch our breath here with the Iron Bowl. Another wild finish. Bama down by four, under a minute to go. Fourth and goal from the 31 here, Bull. Yeah, the only thing they can't do is score a touchdown. You can give them 30 yards. You just can't give them 31 and but, Oh, my God. Left foot down. Right cheek down. Roll. Jalen Milrow to Isaiah Bond. That's the difference. Bama survives. Back to you. Wow. That game's producing no shortage of drama. Red slap on first down. That ball is tipped and broken up by Corey Black. It just undercuts it. Almost came up with a game-saving interception. Is Corey Black. Trying to manipulate the pocket a little bit, steps up. But Reslav is going to have to come alive in the passing game. 8 of 22. To the air. A four-man rush. Now delayed pressure. Over the middle. He's got Hill, who is tackled by Cameron Epps. It's a first down, and that will momentarily stop the clock. BYU's got the two timeouts, 40 seconds to go. Cougars just have to get in the field goal range. Here's the blitz. Retzlaff hit, throws, incomplete. Overshot Epps and almost, almost disaster instead. Just an incompletion. He has avoided the INT today. That was Daniels on the back end and almost hit him right in the middle of his, the five on his jersey. Instant pressure up the middle. And ball hangs in the air a little bit longer. Daniels has got his first interception of the, of the game. They would like to get inside the 35 to get Will Ferrin a shot. He does not have a field goal of 50-plus in his career. Another blitz. 
Retzlaff rolling out, wants Epps. He's got Epps. First down at the 45-yard line. That'll momentarily stop the clock. 23 seconds to go. BYU's got two timeouts. About 10, 12 yards from where they feel comfortable, and they'll spike the ball. So 20 seconds. We'll say 18 seconds on the clock. There's two timeouts left. Game and clock operator, now please reset the game Barry clock. A fair shot. Seconds. Career long is 49, 0 for 2, 50 plus. And Kalani Sataki said, hey, he's got a strong enough leg, but we haven't seen it in 50 plus. Cart, you've got conditions as well down the sidelines to worry about. Yeah, it's slick. The balls are wet. I've been talking to some of the ball boys. They're working overtime, keeping these balls dry, but not ideal conditions. Six-man pressure. Retzlaff on the move. Throws through the BYU sideline. Incomplete. 14 seconds remain. Going to call something to get him in the field goal range. At least give yourself a chance. You got the two timeouts still. So you could essentially run the ball here with Robbins. Uh, a betting Oklahoma State, they're thinking pass all the way. A draw play up the middle and a quick timeout might get you the first down. Red slot. Monk's knotted curtains of rain throws Marion the diving catch inside the 35. Nine seconds to go. Yeah, can take a time out here. Pulling on the field is completed pass for first down. BYU has called their second charge. BYU time out half. uses a timeout. One left, and you still have one more play to give Farron a closer shot. It's going to be a quick pass with nine Ooh, seconds left. They will reset the game clock to 11 seconds. Marion's inbounds when he makes that catch. Man, what a game. So you got the ball on the 34-yard line. You are right on the edge of where you feel comfortable with. Will Ferrin. But you, you feel comfortable, and that's with, you know, conditions being perfect. This is far from it. Wet, windy, rainy, all of it. The, the wind has died down. That is a positive for BYU in terms of approaching this. But as I mentioned before, the ball is slick. The field is slick. seconds. Robbins is the running back. Retzlaff throws left. Quick strike. It is caught by Epps. Out of bounds at the 30. Seven seconds to go. BYU still has one timeout and the offense still out on the field. And trying to get one more quick one. About 48, 49 from here. Barron, if you can get inside 45, he's perfect this year from inside 44. Any of those 44 that he's perfect of had rain and a slick football. Andre, big thing here for the quarterback. The timer in your head, but it looks like they may just try to center this. Yeah. Reds left. We'll get the ball between the hashes. BYU, BYU. uses its Over final timeout. Final Four timeout seconds game. left. Will Ferrin will try to send this game to overtime. Oklahoma State with a win plays Texas for the Big 12 championship next week. BYU with a win, bowl eligible for a sixth consecutive season. misses come from between 44 and 50 this season three out of five this is about a 48 yarder for the top sophomore who transferred from Boise State Utah native with a chance to extend the game
Spencer is the holder. Mike Gundy has a couple of timeouts. He can freeze him if he wants. Here's the snap, the hold, the kick. It is up. And good. Will Barron ties it. And we are going to overtime and still one. Well, never a doubt. He hit this thing as cleanly as he needed to. Right down the gut. Would have been good for, I mean, well beyond that distance, well beyond 50. We'll step aside. When we come back, we play on. Kevin Boog back in studio. Carson Beck, number one, Georgia. Ready for the clean, old-fashioned hate game against Georgia Tech. That is 30 minutes away on ABC. Apple Cup, a good one here. Boog, number four, Washington, and a tight one tied up now with Washington State. Really simple. One-on-one -on -one out there. Make a guy miss. Touchdown. 21-21 in Seattle. Cam Ward and Lincoln Victor. Ooh, we'll keep you up to date under six minutes to go. 21 apiece. Here we have overtime, and right now a couple of plays loom large. One, Oklahoma State scored the go-ahead touchdown late in the fourth quarter, but the extra point was blocked, and that meant BYU needed a field goal, not a touchdown, on their ensuing possession. Alex Barron able to hit from 48, his second longest second longest field goal of the season and now we head into the overtime session Oklahoma State won the toss they chose defense so BYU will go first from the 25 Aiden Robbins is hit by Benson no gain on the play second down BYU offense did not do much in the second half until that last drive. Yeah, until that last drive, it would have been rough going for Radzlov and this BYU offense, but when you needed it, they were able to start the car and drive it. Robbins now goes wide. Empty set. Against a three-man rush. Epps hauls it in at the 20-yard line. It'll bring up third down and five. He's played in a very calm manner the second half of this one. Delivering the football is under 50%, but he's done enough to keep his team in the ball game. A good third down here for BYU. They need to convert. Or at least get it to fourth and short. Robbins, the pistol back, wrecks the tight end in motion. Here comes Robbins, straight ahead, first down inside the 15. Ronnie Satake, 4 0 in his BYU coaching career in overtime. And he's not leaning on that a little bit. Those other three games, I don't know that team was facing a situation where they can get in the conference championship on the other sideline. Epps in motion. Epps on the fly sweep. And he went out of bounds, pushed out by Cam Smith. at their disposal. Epps, they told us this week he would be more involved in the game plan. Rick, we be uh, on alert for number 83, especially down here inside the red zone. And then Robbins, of course, the running back, who just converted the, the last third down situation for BYU. Rhett's left to the end zone and a flag. Epps was covered. 
going to put the ball at the two yard line. Prior to the pass, holding number 11, defense. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Holding, not pass interference, so half the distance instead of the ball being placed at the two. Just clear hold. Yeah. First and goal on the six. Two tight ends and a running back who checks in at 6'3", 240 and Robbins. Retzlaff will keep it, looking for the edge. Gets the edge, in for a score! And BYU putting up the big points and forcing Oklahoma State, which is the advantage you have when you win the toss. You can go second. That way you know what you have to do once BYU finishes their offensive possession. Oklahoma State now having to get into the end zone to extend this game. He's just a playmaker, isn't he? The extra point is good. And now BYU with a stop defensively can win the football game and become bowl eligible. Oklahoma State needs a touchdown to send this to a second overtime. If you're into the numbers, <laughs> haven't told us much today. BYU 90% at halftime, Oklahoma State 96% with less than a minute to go. the second overtime begins if we get there and teams have to go for two after a score after that it's just two-point conversions Ali Gordon expect a heavy dose of Gordon as Oklahoma State gets its turn instead Bowman will throw Second down coming up. Cassidy. Bigger body comes in for Oklahoma State. It's just huge. He looks riding on this game every snap. Out of a two tight end set. Here is Gordon. Pinballs his way to the eight-yard line. It's first and goal. Max Tooley finally brought him down. Which is right up the middle of the formation. They get some pretty good blocks in the middle, and that allows Holly Gordon to kind of squeak his way through and pick up a first down. Get this game moving and alive for Oklahoma State. Gordon has scored all three touchdowns for Oklahoma State. All on the ground. He gets it again. He gets stronger as the game goes on and turns his way to the three-yard line on the second and goal. Cowboys. 31 carries, Andre. Buck 56 on the ground. <laughs> that is crazy. But uh, he knows what's at stake. He knows that this team needs him right now, that they're relying on everything that he has and to try to keep to get himself into the end zone to keep this game alive. He is two rushing attempts short of his career high. Offset pistol. Gordon cuts it back. Touchdown number four. And the Cowboys, an extra point from tying it. They can win it with a two. And it's an easy decision for Mike Gundy. Here's the kick team. Nice job showing you the athletic ability of Gordon to bounce this thing outside. It's designed to go to the right. 
Nothing there. He just puts a foot in the ground. Nobody out the back door. So why not put a foot in the ground and go go that direction? Easy, easy touchdown run for Ali Gordon. Alex Hale's last point after was blocked. This one sends us to double OT. BYU bowl eligible with a win. Oklahoma State to the Big 12 title game with a win. Number one team in the land. Georgia getting ready to face one of their big rivals. Georgia Tech, Dejon Edwards, been fantastic this season with the offense. Yeah, it's been a tricky day with these robbery games. If I were Georgia, I'd be very, very careful. I think Kirby's got their attention. <laughs> that game coming up on ABC. Back to Anish. Well, here in Stillwater, we go to a second overtime, and let's get a refresher on the overtime rules. Once you get into the second overtime, teams have to attempt a conversion after a touchdown. If we get to a third overtime, it's basically alternating two-point conversion attempts. So, Andre, unless we have a field goal yep. on either of these possessions, the kickers are basically out of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do all, you do all you can, and you see how important uh, a kicker was at the end of regulation, obviously, for, for BYU to get this thing into overtime, but you know, it's a little bit different deal. If you're just joining us, BYU led 24 to 6 at halftime. Oklahoma State took the lead with a late touchdown, missed the extra point, and it allowed BYU to tie the game on a field goal to end regulation. Ollie Gordon gets the first carry of the second overtime, and he continues to work out to the 22, a gain of three. 33 carries now matches a career high. 163 rushing yards in what has been a driving rain for most of the afternoon. On the end around, inside the 15 to the 10, Brandon Presley. He's not big, but boy, he plays well beyond his size. Does a whole lot of the good things for this Oklahoma State offense. They mark him at the 11, so Oklahoma State can still get a first down at the BYU 1. See him going back to Ollie Gordon right here. Gordon has matched a career high with four rushing touchdowns. Bowman to the end zone. Wants Leon Johnson adjusting. There is a flag on the field. It's pass interference on BYU. Camden Garrett in coverage. We're just having trouble with a 6-5. Pass interference, number seven. Defense, ball placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Leon Johnson. And so automatic first down inside the five-yard line. They let him battle for a while in this game, but he just held on a little bit too long, got him around the shoulder pads. And before the ball even hit the ground, the flag was already in the air. Are you expecting a diet of Ali Gordon? Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt you're going to your best offensive weapon right here. Don't get cute. Two tight ends. They give to Gordon. Changing direction. Catapults. Touchdown is the call. And Oklahoma State will now line up for two. Wow. What a run. I mean, they had him dead to rights. Going to the left side of the formation, nothing there. Batty had actually had a hand on Gordon. And then he just elevates, finds the, uh, the white chalk of the goal line. Here we go. Herculean tonight, 34 carries, 166. Right. Both teams. I mean, you got to tip your hat to both teams. No doubt. Oklahoma State fighting to get in the Big 12 championship game. BYU fighting to keep their bowl chances alive. This is amazing.
The play clock was winding down. Then they reset the play clock, which did not properly reset. So here's the two-point conversion try. Mandated in the second overtime after a touchdown. Oklahoma State today one for one when going for two. Bowman throws. Josiah Johnson won't get there. Crew Wakely with the tackle in space. So now BYU with a chance to win with a touchdown and a successful conversion. They try to go to the big tight end Johnson and take advantage of some size, but BYU played it perfectly. Andre, the last time an Oklahoma State Cowboy ran for five touchdowns or more in a game, I'm only going to give you one guess. <laughs> uh, who it was? Barry Sanders yep. against Kansas back in November of his Heisman season, 1988. Boy, he did some things that year that no one will ever, and I mean ever, eclipse. And he didn't even get the rushing yardage for the bowl game yep. under the antiquated rules. He's talking about an 11-game schedule. Nowadays, they're playing upwards of 14, 15 to win a national championship, and all of them count statistically. So BYU with a touchdown extends the game. If they get the two, they end it. Two tight ends on first down. Robbins, the running back. Robbins hit the backfield. Pushed back after a game of two, second and eight. fight to stay alive and keep their season going looking for extra bowl practices the 15 that you get there the bowl games would like to keep right now they've been to five straight Epps motions let's laugh throw it's brought in by the tight end Rex and then taken away by Oklahoma State and that's the ball game. Wow. Ruling at an interception. He just wrestled it away from Isaac Rex, the big tight end. This play of a fumble recovered by Oklahoma State is under further review. I think it's Trey Rucker who indeed fought to get the football away from Isaac Rex. Was Rex down before that ball comes out? That ball oh, is ripped was, out. It's out. One more look. Rucker, nine and orange. Has the hand in. When does Rex's knee come down? When's the ball coming out? That ball looks to be out before Rex goes down. I mean, he looks like he stumbles and stays up instead of going down. Would have been better for him had he gone down, and the ball comes out. The knee is still elevated when the ball comes out. He's not down yet. The knee is on the foot of Rucker. Of Rucker, yeah. Well, there, this place is going to go crazy once this ruling comes down. The call on the field was Oklahoma State football. And if that is the case and it stands, the Cowboy Eyes are on Texas and Arlington and the Big 12 championship. Seeing anything indisputable right now. Not that's going to overturn it. To or... overturn the call. Yeah. It looks like the ball is coming out. It's moving clearly. Before Rex goes down. It's clearly moving. The knee was on the foot of the defender. I think it's. This game's over. What a ball game. BYU showed a lot of fight. A team that had. Rolled in on a long losing streak. Nearly beat Oklahoma last week. 
They were right there with the Cowboys for most of this game. After review, the ruling of the field of fumble is confirmed. Game over. Oklahoma State will play for a Big 12 championship.